My name's Adele Onyango and welcome to another episode of Legally Clueless. No, seriously, I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. Hey you, welcome to episode 171 of Legally Clueless. Thank you for rocking with this podcast, for being part of the fam. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, audio episodes like this go out every single Monday and you can join our fuzzy corners of the internet on TikTok and Instagram, we're at Legally Clueless Africa and on YouTube, we're at Legally Clueless. We're bright yellow, you can't miss us. And if you check the show notes, there's links to all of those platforms. All right, I am super excited about this episode for two reasons. One, I've got a brilliant announcement and two, the story is super awesome, super inspiring. Listen to this. I was seeing this man. I don't know if we were very exclusive or what, but for me, I was there. I was <laughs> like a thousand, a thousand percent there. It was those relationships that you're in good terms for two days and then you're in bad terms for two months. I had never touched this man's phone for all this while i knew him i even didn't know his password i saw he's left his phone and it's not password protected it's just laying there I go to the hospital and then they take test and everything then they were like i'm sorry you had a miscarriage like i even didn't notice i, <laughs> I was pregnant like morning i i wake up and now my bed is like blood at this point, I'm just used to watching my own blood. Now I can't even tell different colors. I'm like, wait a minute. When did you make someone else pregnant? I'm like, timeline has in Giani. That's Jane, and her story is coming up a little later in this episode. But before we move on, first and foremost, I just hope that the week that was was gentle on you. And if not, I'm sending you all the good vibes possible. I surprisingly had a very good week. <laughs> there was one day, I think it was Wednesday, I went for an interview and the interviewer was like, oh, so how's your day? I was like, it has been weirdly good. I'm almost waiting for something bad to happen so that I can feel like, okay, this is now back to normal, you know? <laughs> but yeah, when they're good days, we just take them. We don't have to doubt or question or be skeptical, you know? Okay, um, song of the week, before I tell you this, Awesome news I have for you is a classic. I really love this song and I've loved it for such a long time. I feel like it's ooh, ooh, so deep. I'm sad I've never watched it being performed live, but either way, we can stream it. And it's a classic that is Raylon by Papa Wemba. I know I'm not the only one who used to just hear her own wrong lyrics back in the day. I think I used to sing Raylon. <laughs> And just be like, huh, I wonder what that means. Anyway, well on. <laughs> but it's it's such a classic. You can check out the show notes. There's a link to the song. Okay, so the huge announcement. I'm so excited. So Legally Clueless is now growing into Legally Clueless Africa. And this space started as just an audio podcast. And I don't say that as like in a diminishing way, I'm just saying that was the only platform we had, which was this audio podcast. And then we last year birthed the video series, which is just amazing. And we have two seasons out of that on our YouTube channel. And then in August last year, we went on tour and then began our tour series. So we went across Kenya, then we did the Paris episode, we've done Zimbabwe, we've done Dubai twice. Yeah, it just has been growing and growing and I was trying to figure out, okay, what are we growing into? How can we be intentional about this growth? And so later next month, Legally Clueless Africa will officially launch. Let me just give you a heads up. <laughs> I have not shared this. This is still confidential, even though I'm sharing it with you. But we are going to be adding two more pillars, which are events and retreats. So we have such an amazing event coming up. Then we also have workshops. So my thing is, how can we make this space Yes, amplify African stories, but also contribute to your wellness, contribute to giving you skills. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So that's where we're coming from. And our first workshop is on the 13th of July. We're actually doing a workshop before we officially launch because why not? And so I spent one year building the curriculum that will go towards this workshop. And it's 
a digital content stroke digital media curriculum. So I took the 13 years of experience that I have both in traditional media and digital media and I kind of broke down topic by topic. So on the 13th of July, the workshop is going to be looking at three key areas, which is building sustainable content, marketing this content, and then how do you build a business model? How do you build revenue streams? And this is a workshop that would not only benefit audio creators, so podcasters. I think When I look at it, it goes across the board and I'm really excited. I'm really excited to share this knowledge, to be able to create another corner of Legally Clueless Africa that benefits you. And so if you are interested in being part of this workshop, we've limited the slots because the workshops have to be intimate. We have to create a space where we actually have the time to dig deep into these topics and to also hear from participants. So the slots are limited. Tickets are 2,000 Kenya shillings and it's on the 13th of July at Apollo Center. So to be able to get your tickets, just head over to legallycluelessafrica.hustlesasa.shop or go to legallycluelessafrica.com. We also, the great thing about podcasting is I don't have to repeat that because you can just rewind it. But when you go to our website, the landing page, there's not too much up yet because as I said, we've not officially launched yet. But the landing page is an opportunity for you to join the Legally Clueless Africa community. So yeah, we're setting up a community so that we can really start understanding the type of wellness events and retreats that will serve you better and also the type of workshops that we can keep including. You know what I mean? So go to legallycluelessafrica.com to join our community and to buy your tickets for the workshop. Or if you just want to buy your tickets ASAP, go to legallycluelessafrica.hustlesasa.com dot shop and hustle sasa is h-u-s-t-l-e-s-a-s-a i'm very excited about this oh i'm i'm excited i'm very fearful because i'm just like what if you create all of this and like nobody's interested (laughs) you know what i mean it's just like okay well now we have a curriculum that can just sit here but i think even like if you listen to episode one of legally clueless the audio podcast. Man, I just sound scared and look how far we've come. So I'm just in a space in my life where it's all about not letting fear win, not letting fear stand in the way of me and the things that I want to achieve. And also in creating things that are bigger than me, things that will serve others, primarily Africans. And yeah, so I think this this is a really good step and I'm really excited. I'm really excited about it. We are working really hard. I mean, I'm recording this at like 2 a.m. because I'm working on the website. Something wasn't working right. So like we've really put in a lot of work, which is a given for anything that you want to do. <laughs> it's not that there's a chosen for you who put in work, but yeah, I'm I'm really committed to this. I think I think this is this is where we're going. This is where we're going. Anyway, as you're buying your tickets, if the workshop is not something you're interested in, it's not down your alleyway, maybe you could help us by sharing it within your network. So if you know somebody who would benefit from a digital media stroke digital content workshop, you know, learn how to market their content, learn how to build sustainable content, oof, that's really important, and how to earn from their content, you can just <laughs> share the website or the hustle sasa website with them okay let's jump into 100 african stories really excited about this one i'm always super happy when i record your stories you who's part of the legally clueless africa community and that's exactly how it ended up with jane she filled out the form wrote in said she wanted to share a story and then she ended up being like the most insightful, yet at the same time, humorous person ever. Her story 
is on a series of miscarriages which could be triggering to some so just a heads up about that and she also talks about losing her job a hundred african stories on legally clueless stories from africa my name is Jen Wangare Mreu. We come from Kitale. Come from Kitale. That's where my home is. But now I'm living in Nairobi. Last year in July, around 8th, I was seeing this man. I don't know if we were very exclusive or what, but for me, I was there. I was <laughs> like a thousand, a thousand percent there in that relationship. And um, so on this day, uh, we had always had our ups and downs. It was those relationships that you're in good terms for two days and then you're in bad terms for two months so this day i had decided now i'm going to make make it work so i chose within me that i'm going to this man and i'm going to tell him exactly what i want like okay i've thought about it and i don't want the fights i want us to to make it work a day before it was on um Friday, I was out with my friends and then in the middle I was like, no, I'm leaving you, I need to go do something. So I went to his house, found him that day we didn't do anything on Sunday, I didn't go to church. So we were just seated in the house the whole day and then he was like, um, I want to go do something on Thicker Road then. Okay, let's let's go. So when we were coming back, he was like, uh, I know you won't cook in your house, so let's eat, then you can go and then cook in your house, so I was fine. So for the first time, I had never touched this man's phone for all this while I knew him. I even didn't know his password. Then for the first time, I saw he's left his phone and it's not password protected, it's just laying there. So the me decided, you know what? I'm going to touch this phone. I'm going to look through, <laughs> through his WhatsApp messages. So I took the phone and read the messages and shocked to me. I found a message and like, this man has impregnated someone. The someone is like five months pregnant or so, and it's someone I know. So it's like a mutual, a mutual friend. So, so I was shocked. So by the time he came back, I wasn't like, uh, you know, starting as I was just like, I went through your phone. I read your messages. Uh, there was no other way to message deliver what I had um I had read and somehow I was used to being heartbroken, people leaving. But at that point when now I saw that there is another person and who is already pregnant and it's like five, the pregnancy was big. So I was so mad. So he was like, why do you touch my phone? It's my privacy. Then I was like, no, just leave the, your privacy part alone. Let's deal with what I've read. So... While we were arguing, he sat me down. Then he told me, Wangare, in life people make choices. And I have made mine. And he even went ahead and told me, you know, when looking at you, you couldn't be motherly, you couldn't. Yes, so now he's giving me reasons why he has made his choice. And that is the point I snapped. Like, it's when it comes to motherly and mothers, it's one point you don't, you don't talk to me about. Because I have... Had it rough because when I came to Nairobi, I was in another very serious relationship, the campus relationship, you know. So when I came to Nairobi, we were okay with this man. We even even decided we are getting, we are going, oh, we've gotten a little salary. You are knowing we will will survive. So yeah, we I, I got the first pregnancy, but at that time I was having it rough with my first employer. Like I don't know. Me and the new manager, we were just different. So this day I go to the office and I'm feeling this pain. It's uncomfortable. I was used to struggling a lot. Like when I would reach the stairs, I would just be uncomfortable. I'll be anxious. The job was no longer even okay for me. It used to make me very anxious. I remember I used to tell someone, when I'm in my house, I am okay. When the moment I just do the last staircase of this workplace, I become sick. So that day I was feeling sick. And uh, there were many men, we were only two ladies, so I told my other colleague if she can take me to hospital. So she told me, fine. So we went through the meeting, and then in the evening we went to the hospital. The, our officers were in town, so we just went to to a hospital in town. So and then, you know, the way you go to the hospital and then they take tests and everything, then they were like, 
I'm sorry you had a miscarriage. Like, okay, we 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 are here. I even didn't notice I <laughs> I was pregnant. Like, like how how am I supposed to to react about it? So I I called the man and told him. Fortunately, I've had a miscarriage. So he was like, I'm sorry and everything. Life went on. He came and say, uh, he came to Nairobi, saw me, and then went back. He was living in Eldoret. Then, well, somehow, if you have had the first miscarriage, you get pregnant really fast. So, so before I knew it, then I was pregnant again. But now this one, I knew. So I knew I was pregnant and even called him and told him. I am pregnant and he was very excited like I've never seen someone very excited like that oh, for me it was like oh okay we are pregnant again <laughs> so it was very excited so he came to Nairobi and uh, we even planned and it was fine we were going to move on with life but on the other side my job it continued being stressful and I because I do sell, so I used to travel a lot, and this time I am in Nakuru. I start feeling sick again, so I was like, okay, there's a very nice gynecologist, let me go see him. So I go see the gynecology, I explain, he gives me some progesterone, so we are fine. But within the week, I, I continued feeling sick, because now I'm supposed to be in Nakuru the whole week. So within the week, I'm feeling sick, and you know now I'm calling my boss who are not even in the same wavelength, who even don't even like each other and everything. So I'm like, I'm sick. I need to go back home. And he's like, no, that is a way of you running away from work. So you will work. I'm telling you, I think that was the hardest week I had in Nakuru. And I, I, and I mean, Nakuru, I'm feeling very, very sickly and everything. So around Thursday, I was like, ah, no, it, I don't think I'm paid enough for how I'm feeling. So I think I will. <laughs> so I called him. Oh, by the time he had also come to that Nakuru, and we really had an argument, told him I'm feeling sick. So I... I am going to this, it was a public toilet, I remember, and uh, the next thing I'm seeing, I'm seeing blood, and I'm like, oh God, this is not even funny, I don't have a tampoon, I don't have anything, and now you have to look for a tampoon and everything, so it made me feel really bad, and then on Friday I came back to Nairobi, I didn't want to deal with it, you know, those things that happen to you, and you don't, like, you already know what is going to happen, so I was like, huh. I don't really want to deal with this thing. So I left, came back, stayed in my house Saturday, Sunday. So on Monday, I decided, let me take myself to hospital. So again, when you go to hospital, they do their tests, they do their scans, then they tell you, we are sorry. So for the second one, it was... Now it started getting into me. You know, like the first one, you are like, okay, it has happened. The second one, now it started getting into me. And... For me, it hurt me less than the man I was with. Like, you could feel. Because for him, he really wanted a child, a family. So for him, you could really feel his struggles. He's even trying to look for gynecologists and recommendations and who is the best one. He's really trying his best. So to me, it was... I, I was like, I'm, I'm done with this this thing. And... Um, Prior to that, before I in campus, because we are still dating, I used to have an implant, but it used to it used to weigh me down. I used to have um, this bleeding. Sometimes you you were just taking a shower, and then you come out, and then you're bleeding. And it was just for me the implant was not my thing. It was not even working for me. I remember there was a time we had um, gone our separate ways. We had issues. Then I was there with the implant and I'm like, I'm having this implant. I'm not even having sex. Leave alone the unprotected one. It's just making me so sick. It's making me bl like... Uh, I was living with someone, so I was using her room. Now you can imagine me using your room and you find blood. It's not like I want. It's just they come out unexpected. You know, these days, fancy, you can carry a pad and say, oh, I can take care of my period. That one, I I just even couldn't know when it's coming out and it, it wasn't even funny. So for me, at this point, I'm like, maybe I should try get another 
family planning. And then, as it is, the reproductive health is not something that is out there. It's not something, it's not like you can't just go and tell someone, I want to get a family planning. They will be like, why, whatever. It's not a topic people are really comfortable talking about. So I'm there, I'm confused. For me, I can't go back to implant. I can't even continue trying anymore because... I, I am not even ready to deal with another loss. So we are there. Now the wavelength is changing. We are both struggling with grief or loss differently. So for me, I'm thinking about, I'm already imagining another loss will happen. And for him, he's really trying. And I feel like him trying, it's it's bothering me. Like, you're not the one who lost the baby. I am. Like, why are you going to 50 gynecologists? So it's the wavelength wasn't even the same. Now now the relationship, we now no longer even understood what we are doing in that relationship. Everyone is feeling how they are, how they are feeling. So long story short, I didn't get an implant and then the whole implant remembering and everything. So called it a day so still in that wavelength of blah blah i was pregnant that time trust me a 23 year old is very very fat i lose so i'm like huh? okay and this one now this one i didn't know so there was those days when you go somewhere with someone and you're constantly taking lemon tea so you're taking I was thinking, and my friend was like, have you realized this is the third cup of lemon tea that you're taking? And I'm like, don't you realize how lemon tea is very good? Lemon tea. <laughs> lemon tea is very nice. So she's like, no, you've also started adding weight. I'm like, no, I haven't even noticed. Like, it wasn't in my mind as in I am pregnant or anything. That wasn't even part of things I was thinking because with the whole back and forth, it's... So I go home and I'm like, okay, let's let's do this trip. So I take the trip and I'm like, I'm pregnant. That time, we have argued so much, I'm not even sure if I'm going to tell this man I'm pregnant or I'm going to crush him again. So I test it and I move on with life. I'm like, we are dealing with this life. So the day it will show and everyone now will know best on me not taking a lot of lemon tea. So it's, that's when we will deal with it. So I go on with life. Now, by that time, I'd managed to change companies. Now I was away from my stressful situation. I was in another company. So now they had changed my working station to Mombasa. So I just go on with work. I go to Mombasa. But for me, if I go to Mombasa, I'm always sick. Even today, like even today, if I go to Mombasa, I'm just sick. I don't know if it's the humidity or anything. So for me, Mombasa weather wasn't... So I'm always sick. So I go to Mombasa. And it's now, you know, this is now the first time I'm going to Mombasa for work, not for for the beach and everything so by midday i feel extremely tired i am not there like my body just refuses but you still have to work so i go to mombasa come back another month comes i go to mombasa so this month i go to mombasa and i'm coming back to nairobi and i'm sick like very 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 sick i'm struggling i'm like why am I this sick? Normally, I just come, sleep on Saturday, Monday. I feel, uh, I, I feel better, and then I move on. But this time, I am sick, completely sick. I am like, should I go to hospital? Now I didn't have a medical cover. So I'm like, ah, I'll just go. I think it's just the weather for Mombasa. The silly me decides to take um, muscle relaxant, you know, because now it's the joints, the, you know, the sickly weather. So I take them and I, I feel better. And I even remember that Saturday I went to the office. There was a meeting and I was there. And well, in the office, I, I, I was like, okay, I'm feeling better. I, I'm doing good. So I went back home. This whole time, I'm not even talking about the pregnancy. I'm not even talking anything about it. I haven't even told the father of the child that I'm pregnant. I'm just... We are like we are living a day at a, we are living a day at a time here. We are not even going to. They will know and they will know. So I go back home. I sit, 
days go by then this day i wake up it's in the middle of the night a random day can't even remember which day it's in the middle of the night and i'm in this pain it's so painful so i wake up in the night i'm like why am i feeling this much pain so you're feeling pain you're feeling nausea you your body is just not there your stomach has bloated I was like maybe it's what i ate and you know there are those weird times of the night around 1 i don't know why pain come weird times of the night so i'm really struggling with the pain i wake up and i decide let me look if i have painkillers in this house so i look around the house i don't have any painkillers so i'm there struggling with the pain i think the pain grew worse and worse by the time it's 4 a.m. <laughs> it's so painful i feel like screaming i just take my pillow i scream into it and then i continue so then now the pain is growing it's it's, it's not even like cramps it's this weird it's so painful oh I remember that pain i'm like okay so i am there alone with the pain in the middle of the night so it was it was just painful and in the morning i told myself the first thing i'll do i'll go to hospital so morning i i wake up and now my bed is like blood at this point i'm just used to watching my own blood now i can't even tell different colors i'm like so it made me feel so bad and the reason why that one made that one was the worst for me because i was alone like it happened I'm alone because no one really knows it and it's now the first time I'm facing the pain myself so I'm there I don't even know what to do so now back to where I started so me when this man told me I can't be a mother you can imagine how like this whole experience has came back to me for you you've gotten what you wanted you 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 have someone who's pregnant probably is going to give birth so let's just deal with that let's move on you just stop thinking about me and my motherly things so i already have my own scares i even don't know if i can hold a pregnancy to term let alone even have a kid and do you know how many diseases out there are there for kids and everything do you know how the world is so scary do you know how a person can feel alone so me i even stopped fighting about him having another girl who is pregnant i now fought because of what he said and that one made me feel oh god that one wasn't even funny anymore and we fought and we fought and then that time i couldn't even drive home so <laughs> <laughs> so we are seated there the two of us i am so mad i'm like wait a minute when did you make someone else pregnant I'm like timeline has in gani i'm looking at timelines plus everything i'm doing calculations i'm so mad you know you are not even sure how to how to fight it because for me one thing i know about me i just self sabotage relationships so like hi mimi now this one time i have decided i'm working on a relationship do you know how much energy it has taken me not to self sabotage something so it made me made me really mad so we fought and the way you when you find out your boyfriend or whatever or situation she is cheating the first thing you do is call your friend uh, call my friend and she's like no are you sure that is not her type of girl no maybe no 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 she starts doubting you then now you are there with your paranoia and it's it's a whole world of confusion out there so yeah you fight and then you realize now even if i stay here what am i staying to be a stepmother uh, like there's no duty remaining for me so the following day i woke up and i decided fine i'm going out here to the world i'm going to be a best employee i'm going to find my hobbies you know the things you, you tell yourself eh? yeah and i go and i decide okay fine i'm going to work in meru this week that time now i moved to mount kenya region so i go to embu i finish working in embu i go to meru and uh, while well in meru meru has nice people i don't know I, li- i just liked those people they used to make my day interesting and there was cause there was this nutritionist she was just so kind and she just used to show me nice eating places so instead of imagine going to a new town you're just in a hotel and you sit in a hotel so yeah we would go around we'll hang out in the evening 
evening until late. We'll go look for nice places with meat and everything. So Mary was fine. And I remember that that evening I was sitting there and I was like, and here I thought I'll be crying about a relationship. I'm doing great. So, so, so I even remember I needed to, be to, to go to Nanyuki that evening because it was a Wednesday and I had a presentation on Thursday in Nanyuki. Then she was like, Mary to Nanyuki, it's not far. You'll just wake up in the morning and go. So that Wednesday we were fine. So on Thursday morning, I wake up very early now. now that's where you realize you are alone. You told me it was fun. You have slept until <laughs> I've woken up at five. So I woke up very early, paid my paid the hotel bill, asked them to pack my breakfast because I couldn't eat that early and um, left on my way between Meru and Nanyuki. My colleague calls and like, hi Wangare, have you heard there is a meeting? I'm also like, no. Which meeting? Because you know now, for for a while, I was not in touch with the with the job part. I was dealing with my heartbreak. Now the job part was more of like an out outscape for me. So she was like, "No, there is a meeting today in Tamarind at this time." I was like, "No, I haven't seen a meeting. I'm not even in Nairobi. I'm in Mount." Mount Kenya. So I reached, finally I reached on time. I was there for my meeting by 7.30. I do my presentation. I go on with life. And now I call my boss and I'm like, ah, I think I'm broke. I don't have money to spend one more night here. And the office needed to send some money. They didn't send. So she was like, okay, that's fine. You just can come back to Nairobi on Thursday. So I work very happy now i have devoted all my energy we have shifted we are no longer thinking about our broken hearts we are going to be the best employee this company i ever get so so we well now i was driving and left in a new key after I'd done everything I needed to do in Nanyuki, I need to meet one person in Chaka. Somehow I didn't manage, so I just... So when I was driving somewhere past um, this town, it's like a small town, I've forgotten. It's just slightly past Kagumo, while you're coming back. My colleague calls again. Then she's like, do you know we are fired? I'm like... Me and you, who, 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 who is, who is fired here? So she's like, the meeting was to tell us that the company has closed. So, okay, I didn't get the meeting invite because I was an external employer. So there's a whole lot of things that they do with everything. So I didn't get that. But now people started talking. Of course, when you fire everyone in the company, it will go around. So she calls me and she's like, we are all fired. I'm like, madam, I, are you serious? And she's like, yes. All of us, the company is shutting down, so all of us are going home. So I'm like, all of us who? The whole company. So that's not information I want to be told when driving. So once I, <laughs> you are like, although I thought I was doing great, it's the only thing I had. Now we are, we are fired. So huh? I couldn't believe her. So I called another person, another person, and they were all saying the same thing. We no longer have a job. <sighs> A two hours drive was long. Well, by the time now I reached home, I opened the door. And then, you know, when you have not been in your house for so long, it's so cold. So I opened the door. It's very cold. And I'm I'm there. I'm like, I thought I was dealing with this heartbreak thing with work. And then now there is no, no work. For a moment, I didn't know how to react. I remember I slept on the floor and my stomach was hurting. I even didn't know if it was the food making my stomach hurt or it was the losing. It's it's not something I dreamt waking up in the morning, losing the job. And to be honest, it's not a job that I was like, hmm, there's a job I really wanted. I remember while applying for it, the, someone sent me the first time. I saw the link and I was like, no, I'm not applying. Sent me the second time. Mm-hmm. Then I was like... Oh, that's a very big company. I have very little year of experience. Do you think I will do it? So, and then there was this other friend of mine. So I went and told him, by the way, I have seen this job and I'm trying to apply it. It's disturbing me. And then he's like, Wangara, I know it's not disturbing you. Bring. So he applied. He, he asked me for my CV. He did, he did the whole 
mm-hmm. application. And then now when I was called for the first interview, I went and it was in, at 6 p.m. So I remember going there and, you know, there's that place where everyone is coming for an interview with a car. And then you, you are coming, walking, and I find this person up for a reception and I'm like, hi, what's your name? She tells me then I'm like, do I even have a chance? People are coming here with cars and then there is me. Uh, I joked about it and did my interview, went home. So after that interview is when now I felt like, okay, I really need I really, really need this this job. Yeah, so I went and then um, came back and then that time, it was around November, my friend was having an event in Mombasa so he invited me. So while we were sitting there, they called me for the second interview, which was on a Monday morning. Then, so I told him, you'll just go to Mombasa, I'll come, I'll come later. So on Monday morning, I went for the interview. Okay, I had read, I had researched. Now it now started looking a reality to me, like, ah, Sasa, now you can't joke with this job. You really need to do so well. So did my interview, went to Mombasa, and I remember in Mombasa, like the third day, I had this panic attack, a very bad one. Uh, you don't really need to have a panic attack in front of a fine man. I think that's what scared him. He never came back in my life. So I had this panic attack and I was all over the place. And I think it was the first time I had a serious case of panic attack. So I was like, Ikazi nafanya hadi ni pate panic attack in Mombasa in front of a very fine man. No. So it was bad. I was all over the place. I cried and I remember he looked at me and he wasn't even sure how to even deal with it. Dude was just looking at me. Wasn't sure if he, he was to hold me. I stopped crying. He just continued giving me drinking water. <laughs> it wasn't funny. So I remember I had really a really bad panic attack. And we never talked about it. We left Mombasa. We came back to Nairobi. Like, never happened. So now I'm there. After the interview, the company had told me, they will call within a week. And during the interview, I was like, if I don't get the job, please don't call me. Uh, I'm at this point, I'm not okay with <laughs> So a week later, they called. So they were like, hi, do you know why you're calling? And like, I said, you only call when I have the job. So let me assume it's good news. Then they were like, it's good news. Trust me. From there, I didn't hear anything. Though, like, I knew the person the other side was telling me about the job and everything. Me, my mind stopped at you had gotten the job. I was so happy to a point that I couldn't get a matatu. Like, I walked. I was all over the place. I was so hyper. I was, like, very happy. I knew that excitement can't be contained in a matatu. Like, no, no. (laughs) <laughs> so to me, it wasn't a job that those jobs that you are, this was a job that I, I think if there's ever a time in my life I prayed more was that time for that job. So me losing it, huh, back to square zero. So at some point I asked myself, you can't handle relationship, you can't handle a job. Like, do you know how people always have an identity? Like, hi, my name is Jen, I'm a Christian. Hi, nimeokoka, nimeolewa. Like, every... People don't just end at your name. So, after you lose a job, you now realize it ends at your name. You are there. So, you have 24 hours a day. The first few months, you're positive. You call you. <laughs> you can't become a motivational speaker. You call your friends. <laughs> you, you're very, very positive with life. Uh, the first few months. Oh, when a positivity... Then now reality starts hitting you when now your account is just doing negative. Nothing is entering. We are going negative. Negative, negative. And you're like, okay. And now all the contacts you had, you know now you had contacts of people you talk, they were influential, they were important, they they are managers, they can give you and now now they they are just even tired with you. Now they are not even listening, talking to you. So they are going reducing. So you had like four chances of having hopes. Now they are reducing. You're at zero. I remember I reached at a point where I didn't even want to apply. Like I looked at jobs. I'm like, I'm not even, I'm not even applying. And that time now I started drinking again. Okay. Like 
I do. For me, drinking, there were those that you enjoy, you enjoy making cocktails and you enjoy. But then now this one was the escape drinking. You know, the one I know I'll drink on Friday and wake up on Monday. And on Monday, I'll be hungover and deal with my hangover to Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, I'll drink again. And like, it's clearly an escaping kind of drinking because you honestly don't have anything to do with your time. And your parents are like, we are praying for you. And you know, yes, you are praying for me. But reality, hapa hivi, account yangu inaenda negative. I remember my dad was like, Kuja nyumbani, then you will go back to Nairobi and figure out life. So I knew it's it wasn't a state I would want to go home with. You know, you don't want to be home and you are sitting. Kwanza ni go. You don't even have a bedroom. It's it's a room where everyone passes when they want. So it's not like in Nairobi you will say, At this is my secret bedroom, I'll close the door. That's like the store. It's still your bedroom. It, it, it has everything happening. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, no, in my mental state, I, I can't do that. And that is also the time when now you start remembering, oh, by the way, so you are like, oh, I did process the kwachua feeling. And then you also remember about the person who left you. Yeah, like these days, I remembered there was a man also, my first, first, very first boyfriend, like nine years ago, left me through the same way. He like went out one day, knocked to his house, and there was this person who was pregnant. And then I cried, I ate cake, I woke up, moved on with life and so you you and then at, at some point i was like and i'm repeating an eight year ago kind of mistake like i am i'm the same person i was eight years ago like nothing so it was just a period of confusion me and i just say it's a modogo than you modogo than year it's it's a year full of confusion you don't even know which feeling to deal with so you are angry you are bitter you are Everyone, you are just picking a fight with everyone. Oh, nakutana tu na mtu. Yeye ndio shida. Like, mimi si shida. You should see. I am unemployed. Mimi si shida. Well, probably when you are shida. So it was just a period of confusion to me. And then you don't want to mix confusion and anger and jealousy. And then you are looking around every everyone's life is moving on. And then I remember I went for this job interview. And I thought, I thought that one I will get it. Then I went back and then I was called. Then I was like, no, I'm sorry. You didn't get the job. I was so angry. I cried. And then, thank God for tinted cars because I was crying. I was like, thank God see my tattoo because I would have told the person next to me someone has died. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I can't stop crying. And it. It now threw me off balance because now that was like my last, my last hope. And I was like, okay, I don't have an identity. I don't have even someone. I remember my friend thought I was being so dramatic and my life had a lot of problems. You know, you always have that one friend you think there will be your people shall be my people Mimi, I don't have my people so who shall be my people so I am my own people so I I am angry I am exhausted I'm trying to be positive I'm trying to go to church as a routine I remember there was a day when I kaki tiapo nambia mungu sasa ka because now Mimi, I'm in a crisis of faith because at some point I thought if we pray, because before I have done ombi classes and everything, so I know if you pray to God, he should answer. And this God I'm praying to, why why are you not even answering? It's the days are moving. I am here. I even don't know who I am. Uh, honestly, you can't go in front of people and be like, hi, my name is Jen. I drink alcohol nine days of the week. And uh, you can't even introduce yourself that way. So you don't even know. Like what is what is my identity? Like what is me, what am I even doing in Nairobi? And you're like, okay, sasa and Rudy Ushago. Now what if I live in Ushago forever? Like now I go back and I get comfortable with the life and now I live there completely. And also now fuel going there, it's not easy, it's not cheap because it's in Kitale, so <laughs> And so also you need a lot of fuel. So yeah, I think happened you una hit you wangu an imposter syndrome real. You are like you go to an interview, you even don't prepare now. You are like the more I prepare, the more it will hurt. So I shouldn't prepare so that when I come back, I'll be like, you will 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 you
will always have a reason on on why because now if you prepare and you are told no also there was this day I was just sitting in the house in my confusion I was probably not even sober I was just there someone calls and hi I got to hear your company closed do you have? and I was like yeah I'm sorry najua utaitisha pesa mingi mimi sina kazi ya kukupea and then he he he, he disconnected the phone there I'm like okay. Okay. Where was that from? Like now now you get people calling you not because they really care but because they they really want to know what happened. And even you call some for interviews and then they're like, "Oh, your company closed." So so now they're using the interview as a chance to get more information, especially the competitor companies as a chance to get more information. So it was a period of loss. You don't want to lose everything in one year. I don't want to lose friends. You don't want to lose a relationship even if it wasn't working. And then now I, lo- I remember one day I was like, "Ani hata huwa na mume hata angekupiga tu kujua kani ilipoteza kazi." Like it's obviously hard, but at least you should have called. So you are there. You don't have an identity. You don't have you don't even know who you are anymore. You don't know what you're doing anymore. You're trying business. Now trust me, usijaribu business when life is not working for you now it's also taking your money you are getting conned your account is going negative so eh, now before i took time and now told myself you need to breathe it was months had gone it was now december so december sisi ambia mzazi niko nairobi natafuta kazi you know you now go back to you now go back home so yeah just confusion and everything imposter syndrome self identity you have no idea and another thing i think i learned that time ni you realize friends um everyone is going through something but you know for you because it's a major thing sometimes you want as if everyone's life to stop like your emergency should be the emergency I think i learned it the hard way and also me i did i do the reverse now someone's emergency should not be my emergency when me i'll be able to deal with my things and i'll deal with the emergency when i'm in the mental capacity to deal with it so how how did i now like move outside of that a period where, where I am just you even don't know now you know start asking yourself who is Wangare and you know so the first thing I did I took a book a very fancy book you see the ones we were writing letters with in in high school it was a very nice book and I wrote everyone everyone I felt they had done wrong to me everyone I felt like they should have been there when I what I needed them and i took the book and wrote everything down but now this time i said i'll start apologizing so i just do the first name dear so and so i apologize for and then wengine unakumbuka kai hata hata sikumbuki tulikosania nini mimi najua tulikosana but exactly what happened so i now took time to to breathe I, i went for an interview at least kunakuwa hopes and everything but now i took time to to breathe i took time to say hey it's now time to to be in touch with yeah now maybe i don't have a job maybe business is failing everything niko tu hapo so who is me what, what am i even doing in this world and you know i even traveled kenya <laughs> can imagine i'm broke and i'm still traveling good good financial advice when you when traveling what i used to do you know when you are traveling like there was a day you went to samburu in samburu you leave town at 6 am so okay i was drunk from 6 i i remember i i went through samburu zoned i was in my own zone i was feeling my own things and i then come back you know those are escapes now hapa kuna mtu ata notice huyu hata huyu hata yuko huyu hata elewi kitu inaendelea they were good very good escape routes you know now everyone is hyping wewe unaweza tu amua uende kwa swimming pool you just sleep and then there was this day someone still at night i was sleeping and then someone called me in the middle of the night someone close to me then that will be their story they will talk about it when they are ready then she called me then they were like so and so has tried to commit suicide and we are taking her to hospital i'm like okay at that point i'm like what is even the time you are telling me someone is trying to commit suicide and okay 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 fine so you you are like okay what is the issue they don't know and everything and then now the following day you are going around nairobi you are trying to 
you are trying to find psychologists, you are trying to find, and that, that that is the point in life where I noticed there are days you don't even have an idea on how to act about anything. You have no idea on what to say. And I told myself, maybe that's also what people feel about me. You just don't have an idea on what to say, what to do. I was like, yeah, maybe now I'll go back to school and try be a psychologist. Maybe in future I'll know, I'll know what to tell people. Yeah, so that is basically it. And you realize all these things are happening and you're not even processing them. You you are just going out of the world, sending bad vibes, sending bitterness around you, anger. You and your two sikum to akugwaruze kwa traffic. They they will wonder what is it? <laughs> you feel like you want to beat someone, you don't have someone to beat. Yeah, so right now I'm not now I'm in school. I now settle now that after that after realizing even for the people close to you you don't even really know what to deal with. After also realizing how when your mental state is not together, when you as a person can't even process your feelings, when you even don't know like mental health plays a huge part even mm-hmm. looking back there are some fights i used to have with my bosses when i was being employed i wouldn't have them right mm-hmm. now because my mental capacity has maybe grown or something so yeah i decided to go back to school i used the last money i had to pay fees i was like mungu sasa this time for real you must come <laughs> yeah yeah so i i i, I decided to choose um, psychology yeah and then i went back to Yes, I you. Don't worry. I didn't afford the money, but I was like, okay, for once, I'm going to to de- to do the desires of my heart. So this is a desire of my heart. Fist to tapata to kisonga. I don't know how. Yeah. So yeah, that is what prompted me. Cause even when writing apologies, you realize you find someone like there was also a friend of mine that at that point I'd lost a job. She had gotten a job, and she was being given the dream salary you would want to get. And one day she calls me complaining about the job. I'm like, do you realize you're complaining to someone without a job? So I I just snapped and told her, no, don't call me about your job or anything. And then she was like, no, you, you are selfish. And I'm like, no, you are the one who is selfish. So now going back to school and doing it and going through psychology is when you realize grief comes in many ways. So even if I look at something appears positive in your life or whatever you have in your life looks like something I should celebrate, you might have your own challenges with it. So as an individual, how can I be able to to balance the, the two feelings? So for me it has helped i think i hope so yeah it was also an easier way instead of paying psychologist throughout life watch a tutu so me yeah we'll still pay because you can't be a psychologist without having your own yeah but yeah it's also a way you like you learn to understand personalities people and you realize they just need a time where you need to now step up and be accountable Catch more African stories in the next episode of Legally Clueless. Wasn't that story something? And you can just like feel her energy, right? I wish I, I wish you could all be in the room with me when I'm recording it. Because like then you can just see her in action and just feel her good vibes. What I really did identify with is when she talked about losing your job and identity. Because I remember, and it's something that I often say, don't ever confuse what you do and who you are. There's a huge difference between those two. And sometimes your identity can get lost behind roles and titles. And even like you'll be seeking validation from like your manager. And it's not only validation in terms of as far as the work is concerned. It's like even just your entire being, forgetting that this is what you do, not who you are. And you see it a lot in offices. There's people who like engage in those office battles and politics as though that organization is theirs. And I think a contribution to why that happens is a contributor, sorry, to why that contribution, contributor to why that happens is the blurred line. You've forgotten there's a huge difference between who you are and what you do. And so now the two are enmeshed. Any threat at work is not a threat on your job. It's like a threat on your entire being and I think that's a very dangerous place to be especially in in employment because a lot of decisions can happen about you without you being involved you know and sometimes those decisions could be you being laid off it might not be because 
you're not performing or you're not efficient or whatever. It just could be, you know, the way the business is going, right? So if you are very clear about who you are, things like that won't like shake your identity. And so that part of her story, I really did identify with that. Anywho, you can share your story as well. If you check out the show notes, there's a Google form, fill it out and we will get back to you. And yeah, I absolutely love recording your stories. So wherever you are in the world, we want to hear your African story. Share it with us. Once again, do not forget to join the Legally Clueless Africa community. Just go to LegallyCluelessAfrica.com. So excited. And if you are working in the digital media, digital content space, you will benefit so much from our inaugural workshop that is looking at building sustainable content, revenue streams, marketing your content efficiently. And that's going to be on the 13th of July. Tickets are 2000 bob, limited slots, very, very limited slots. So the earlier you get your tickets, the better. And to grab your tickets, you can go to legallycluelessafrica.com or directly to Legally Clueless Africa dot hustle sasa dot shop. All right. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this episode. I can't believe it's like 2 a.m. and I'm so full of energy. I think it's because of the workshop. It's because of the community. I am going to crush. <laughs> I'm going to crush so hard. Like once I'm done with this, this energy, all of this, hey, it will go. But thank you so much for listening to the podcast at the very end. I do hope that your week is drenched in grace and in kindness. That's it for this episode of Legally Clueless. You can share this podcast with your friends. You can keep it for yourself. I'm not judging. Just make sure you're here next week for the next episode.